Welcome to Winning Conversations. We are glad you are with us today. We have the privilege of sitting down with Terry and Hannah Minor. You know uh, Terry as a Christian rapper who um, raps about the favor of God on Jerry Seville's life. And you know Miss Hannah, she's our children's pastor. We had such a great time with them. Of course, Hannah is on our podcast team. You hear her voice on various podcast episodes. But we wanted to hear their story a little bit more and it was so good that we broke it up into two episodes. So I want you to enjoy part one right now. Well, this is a treat. We have a power couple here. And, and who so are they? This is Terry and Hannah Miner. One of our <laughs> co-hosts here. People, you might have heard this person. Hannah, the voice. Yes. And Terry, the, the, the silent authority behind all of it. No, well, he this will is talk the, no, this is the perfect example of outgoing um, extrovert wife and introverted husband. That is how <laughs> I mean I, we're the same. I know you and you and show are a little different because you're definitely extroverted, no. but that's how like me and Ryan are. I know that's how Tanya and Ryan are. We've had this conversation before, but this is I mean y'all are prime. What do you even know what this dude does? I, well, I know, so, but like Han I mean Hannah, <laughs> she doesn't stop talking, and no, like, like Terry, you have to like get it out of here. That's you what have I'm to saying. Like, yeah, but like only behind the scenes is like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which you, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm having a flashback moment when we were playing at the house. The game was like, oh, where does that go? It doesn't even matter. Oh, it me and does Terry it doesn't even matter. Wow. I forgot about that first. Yeah. And you and Andy. I was okay. telling you. Marty and matter. Tanya quote that all the time. Dude. It doesn't matter. I, I use that quote all the time. Still. It doesn't like, even oh, matter. It doesn't matter. And I just like sit there like, it doesn't even <laughs> matter. It doesn't even matter. Anymore. And with it, the pins in the hand. Okay, okay, for yeah. everybody. Yeah. Markers, Hold on. Like, I'm just saying. It doesn't even matter. I need to explain this story to everybody listening really quick. We had a podcast party. And there was some crazy game that they Tanya had us do. Yeah, First of Andy all, and I won it. By the we, way, we won. Anna and I won we it. We with our ice cream cone. But then I get I get chosen to do the game with Terry, <laughs> and <laughs> our dynamic just Oops. it didn't it didn't work. I we were meant no, to. No, it worked. We were we were <laughs> it meant. It worked. The whole game was player A has to tell player B what to draw without looking at them. Yeah. So player B just has to listen to the instructions and draw. <laughs> and I obviously a, don't know how to player explain it. Who shall remain nameless? <laughs> said, I need you to draw a circle over there. And so player B is like, oh, how do you want me to draw it? And player A is like, doesn't even matter. And, and you're like, and player B and is player like, B give me a spear. Down, and and like, oh, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even then what are we doing with this game if it doesn't even matter? Like the whole, it was the most amazing moment. You weren't there and you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> then it's not funny and you don't know why we're talking I know. about it. it. Terry and Hannah Minor. Terry is our, I don't, like, well, what do you, when someone asks what you do, what do you explain? Because it? I mean, it's like a music ministry, the thing but is, what is, do you. It's so many things, to be honest. To be honest, people have asked that. I go to churches or you're in green rooms and people ask, you do this, you do that, you do all these things. Like, I feel like I'm um, discredited if I just say Christian rapper, if I just say Venice, if I just say preacher, yeah. if I just say this or or DJ. I just, it was like 2012, I just said, just say man of God. Don't even say anything else. There you I was, go. I was that's, say that's literally, but you can say man of God. Around, that sounds better. <laughs> around 2011 and 12, I just said, just leave it at man of God because it, it's it's overwhelming for me sometimes. It's like so many things, but at the same time, it's like just, just settle it at God's man of God. God's had our hands in a man lot of God. things. Man of God. That's yeah. it. Man of God. So, how did you start down that path of being the man? The, the man of God you are now wasn't made overnight. Yeah. Like, how did that path start? Because that's a lot. Long story short, I was um, in uh, high school. My one hundred percent focus was football. And um, because your to daddy. make a to make to make a long story short, I wasn't able to receive the full uh, ride scholarship to the college uh, that my dad went to before he got drafted early to the NFL. Like, like yeah. it, it it was that moment right there because everything. That my whole life, the, the 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 core focus of everything was sports. I was ranked number three in the state of Tennessee at fullback at 170 pounds. Played all four years varsity, three state championships. I mean, letters, you know, for college. I mean, you name it, right? Uh -huh. Visits, all that. Um, but that was a major turning point concerning now what in the world am I going to do in my life because I have put no focus or attention or effort or energy anywhere else. And then um, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget it. My dad came in my bedroom and he sat on the edge of the bed, and he was saying things like, "He said, he said, son, he said, God's hand is on your life, 
And then he raised his hand up and put his hand on my shoulder. He said, just like God would never take his hand off of you, he said, I'll never take my hand off of you. And so whatever it is God has for you, like, I'm I'm, I'm going to roll with it with you. Wow. And then, um, so long story short, my dad had a dream about me in, like, ministry. And but it was, like, this very, very long detail, very powerful dream. And it was so big at the time, and I was in the middle, in the very midst of this transition, I didn't see how, like, I, I didn't see myself being able to do it. So I, yeah, I, it was um, me just struggling with believing that that was from God because it was so out there. Oh, it was. Oh, it was vivid. It was. And, and, and my dad is a crazy note taker, and I get it from him. So I was, uh, and so he was just. I was just reading his notes from the dream, and, and his friend like, oh, this is. I don't, I don't see myself being able to do stuff like that because I mean, I was, I was, I was, no, I'm still quiet, but back then it was, a, it was this time. Times twenty. After struggling with, with believing that dream and all that, like that, that was from God. He he then like a week and a half later gave me the dream. Wow. And then he um, gave it with a little bit more detail. And then uh, this amazing scenes, the illustrations. But after that, that's when I I would say if officially like mid oh eight stepped up to like answer the call quote. Okay. All right. And was there a, like that identity shift from athlete? To oh hey, yeah, that was I'm doing the Lord's work now. That was a major process, yeah. But it helps concerning like quote rolling with the punches type because like in football, what happens is when you mess up and it's first or second down or whatever or even third down, you don't have time to think about what went wrong. The next play is in a few seconds, or the ref gonna blow the whistle. You're gonna get penalized for not moving forward, right? Mm-hmm. So it's the same with life and ministry. It's like you, we, don't, we don't have time to just sit around about something that may not have worked out or it didn't go the way we thought. We have to get back up, mm-hmm. pray, and move, and be ready just to just move forward because the next play is coming. So it was like that type of uh, thing in my life with that transition of of um, having that foundation ever since I was six to just you know to have that instilled into you. Like all right, then it's about time for that next down. Mm-hmm. So. Keep just keep uh, uh keep it moving. So, <clears throat> oh Hannah, you're here. Oh hey! <laughs> I, mean, my, I, I didn't even know. My, like where'd she go? Uh, I'm in deep thought and meditation over well, here. So amazingly, that's the transition you start. Then where do you come into the plague? Where does this what relationship begin? I? Uh, that was 2010, 11, the 70, 11, 12. When it started, 10. correct? No, not 10. 2007 is when you said graduated high school when I is when I started to answer the call was like very late very very late o, uh, 07 and then two years and so later, I was like graduating high school 2010 2011 so I was doing a missions internship with my church um we did a lot of different things in the community in which he lived uh, we did a lot of outreaches there um we did like uh going to the food bank running food up to these houses for people that needed food we, they took us to Haiti different things like that that we did through this internship well I met him through booking him. <laughs> I booked him for an event because our internship at our church at the time, which I grew up a little Baptist girl, so yay. So anyway, so they told me, Hannah, you're in charge of booking the entertainment or the music for the event because the park within this community that we'd been helping and reaching out to all summer had been vandalized, like burnt to the ground. Oh, wow. And um, so we wanted to come step in and put a new playground there and facilitate that. So we wanted to do a whole event. We wanted to do food, vendors, all the things. So I met his sister the summer before, long story short, and knew that, hey, her brother does Christian music and rap. I'm going to get a hold of him. So that's how, long story short, that's how we got to know each other. So then I was leaving with my friend who was also doing this internship with me. And I turned, I said, and I saw I had seen him beforehand praying with a big group of men. And I I remember saying to her when we were leaving, I was like, I'm going to have a man just like that. Oh, how like yeah. like it was just really cool. Like I, sp- I spoke it into existence, and it happened. Yeah. You know, I and like power of your words. It was Watch the man out. like that. It was the man. You it was the actual at. man. Yeah. <laughs> hey. So you shake your name. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we uh, we met. We talked. We knew that we knew what was the deciding factor. Is like we knew that we wanted to change the world for Jesus. Like we knew that we wanted to do ministry together. We would sit in the car late at night and just talk about like our dreams and our plans for like impacting the world. About three or four hours. Um. And so I slowly started, um, now my senior year of high school, I went to a thing called like a listening prayer. Like, I'm sure everybody's heard of that, but I had never heard of it at the time. I, I don't know. My parents, oh my, had just, know that is. my parents had just gone through a really hard divorce. So I was seeking out, Lord, what do you want me to do with my, my senior year? Like, do I go to college? What do I do? I was thinking about going to YWAM, 
world missions. That was in my heart. Um, so I went to this thing called the listening prayer with my friend. And it's like, where you go and you sit in this room and there's these people that are sitting in there quietly and they're just in, in prayer, like praying in tongues over you. And, um, very prophetic and they started speaking over my future and I still need to find that. Ca- they put it on a cassette, which uh, I, I really want to pull it out and find it again and transfer it over to a CD so I can constantly hear it now because that's my senior year of high school. And she um, started to just meet my friend in there. They gave my friend a word and then they just started prophesying over me. how I was going to be impacting women all over the world. But then they started saying, if you keep an out of the box mindset, the Lord's going to take you to big new places that you would have never pictured yourself in before. And I knew part of that box mindset was, um, was so to speak, like everything I'd grown up because I remember hitting my senior year in the church I was in as a Baptist girl. And I remember there's, I remember talking to God and be like, there's more than this. And on one of my trips that I went to in Haiti, I, I feel like my missions pastor at the time may have also been listening and hearing from word of faith teachings. Because it was the first time I'd ever heard this, but I know it was the Lord preparing me. So we went to these communities within Haiti, and there'd be like little shacks, literally like si- like houses that they called where they lived, made out of siding or pieces of wood that they just threw together. And our whole team couldn't even fit in one of these places, but we were going around putting water filters in and things like that. Well, every night we would meet um, in our house that we stayed in, and our missions pastor would have a word for us, and he's like, we're going back to the community tomorrow. We're going to have a meeting with um, this woman, and we're going to believe that she receives her healing to walk. And that was my first time ever as a Baptist girl growing up. Like, my eyes are like this. And he said, if anybody doesn't have faith that that can happen, then don't walk into the room tomorrow with us. Wow. I mean, and that just shook me. But I knew at that time, like, this is that thing. This is that open, out-of-the-box mentality and still to this day, I find myself constantly revisiting that that prophecy and that word. Like, okay, am I really what am I right now with what I'm doing today? Is my heart open? Is my mind open? Do I believe God can do the impossible? Well, that's kind of like anything? that's your testimony too. That's a yeah. that's a word like that's in t- your entire testimony is yes. out of the box. You know what the, I mean? Yeah, yeah. We're totally in my whole life. <laughs> Which we'll touch on yes, that in just a minute. Ministry. But yes. And yeah. so and so that was my first feel into what is our missions pastor at this Baptist church touching into? And I truly believe he was starting to come that's this awesome. direction. So then I met Terry, which opened the door for me, word of faith. Like that's what his family was fully in. And so when I started, we started dating, I started coming to his services and things like that. And I just started getting poured into and learning and learning and learning. But I truly believe it was all divine. Yeah. And, um, and like why I also think it's so important that your atmosphere matters. Because I think that was one of the biggest things that I learned under your dad was like that the atmosphere matters, that you could be going through one of the hardest seasons in your life. You could be going through miscarriages like what I went through, or you could be believing God for the impossible, but it's how you stand in that circumstance, even with the small things. Are you keeping joy around you? Are you worshiping through it? And I feel like that was one of the biggest things that I took from um, from underneath Terry's dad in ministry at a young age, you know, so that we now carry with us through everything that we do. So I want to know about some of these circumstances. Talk a little oh, bit yeah. about like what God has done, what out of the box thing has God done for you? But one, yeah, one great one I'll tell you about is when we were like, oh. we both, um, when God had us to meet, it was like, we both, it was one of those corny homework movie moments when we was in the car after the movies, we had like four hours of conversation when we like fenced each other's sentences. We drove by we your dad's We uh, literally fenced each other's sentences where, and that actual sense, I still remember what it was when we both said that what? We're, we're, yeah, we're, Tell uh, me. You we're, remember everything. How, how we said we were ready for, we both told God that we were ready for our next to be our last. Oh, remember? yes. I remember and we both that. said it, we're like, same time, we're like, we're wow. working. That's what was like our recent prayers and conversation to the Lord before we met. Um, so I, I, so, so we're doing ministry together. Terry's serving his dad in ministry, um, for years. Um, yeah. I feel led that I need to go get a job. So I go do that. Um, right after getting married, when we, when we had got married, we lived in we lived by faith <laughs> in my bedroom in my parents' house, like for, the size of a closet. For like the first few years of our marriage, mm-hmm. it was like my bedroom slash home studio. So like the bed was like in the back, and like right in the front was like the desk where I'm making. That's where I made Favor Flow. Can you tell people who don't know Favor Flow? Favor Flow is? Okay, Favor Flow is um, one of my singles. 
Um, the one uh, some of you may uh, be familiar with from Jerry Seville mentioning it a few times in his uh, messages. And that was the song. That was one of the songs because at that time I had already had probably three or four songs on the radio mm -hmm. that the Lord took even further, <laughs> which was That's, hilarious. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, so, but we felt led like we were supposed yeah. to stay. Where we oh, were, yeah, we, despite yeah. our situation, we felt yeah. like we were. Terry knew he was just serve his dad. We knew we weren't supposed to literally like leave his dad, which is so. Um, now we look back and we're like, that's why after his dad passed away, which we'll go into a little bit. Yeah. Um, but it was those years that really were training ground for us, right underneath him because we lived within the mm -hmm. same house. Yes. So Terry's yeah. dad um, played for NFL Cleveland Browns, all the things, but he was also a minister, led a church, had sports camps. We had we had um, a lot so, of inner city ministry. Yeah, we yeah we we would pick up on a school bus six hundred a, a little over six hundred kids every week for about wow. fourteen years. Wow. So, so you had a strong you had a strong ministry ministry example. Yes. Which yes. I feel like would did that make it easier for you to step into ministry because you had this like really strong example right in front of you? It made it. it I would say it made it strong for me to come back. Mm -hmm. Um, because just because my day of preacher doesn't mean right. Yeah, it's like you got. I got a lot of PK friends that are literally totally opposite, totally oh. contrary to the word of God. And don't want nothing to do with church. Yeah, and so and and mm -hmm. those were my boys, mm -hmm. and you know in the yeah. same in the same neighborhood. And so it's like, but the the difference was my dad's my dad allowed the love of God, the actual raw, tangible, authentic love of God to flow through him towards my uh family, mm -hmm. uh, towards us. And so that was the strongest hook more than anything. Yes. Concerning, um, man, this is this is this is what this is what Jesus is really like. Mm -hmm. So uh, and, and and so no matter what anybody ever no did, who, who did him wrong, or whatever, yeah. what like like he like, it, or even if you did something, you could literally talk to him because you knew how he was going to respond no matter how bad it was. Yeah. And so that's what opened the door of being a safe place. Mm -hmm. Because you know I'm a he he, he gonna respond the way Jesus would want would want him to respond like so that was a that that was major and, and even with the outreaches that we had and school stuff and sports teams and sleepovers like we did this every year and then you see about 600 kids on the floor all of them have a box lunch and we're all looking at the big screen every week we ended it every year I mean every every week for years watching super kid movies. Uh, with uh, Commander Kelly and the Super Kids, nice. so all the all the all the hood kids love Super Kids. Like they didn't know about Coco, they didn't yeah. know about that, but they knew about Super Kids, and it made wow. Jesus cool. Like, yo, we can go over here and defeat the devil. Like, nah, we gonna be no punk. But that's how they are in the movies, and you know the Super Kid movies in the film. So it's like it made people excited about Jesus. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, those kids started coming to church and coming to the children's church and stuff because they was like, man, this is fun. Like, you know. And so, but uh, he, but Hannah got to experience that so many times concerning like her experiencing the love of God through him towards her in a personal way, which, which impacted her as well. And y'all ended up taking over that church, right? Are you not taking over, but y'all stepped in. Yes. So uh, I don't know how many years that we just served faithfully And God. I think that's another thing is um, God sees all the years that you serve. Mm -hmm. He sees everything that you put in. And, um, so his dad, they were up watching Duck Dynasty one night, and I was in our little our little cute room, and I was getting ready excited to be up for work the next day. Which, by the way, like side note, I my job that I found a lady believed in me to do makeup, and I was just looking for a job, like any job. And I was like, I remember being like, Lord, why in the world am I doing makeup? And now well, we'll the Lord's using forward, it for His glory. Yeah. Fast forward, um, but then I was getting ready excited to work the next day. I had makeup I had to do. And, uh, and I just remember Terry running into the room. He like grabbed his jeans. He said, I've got to go, I've got to hurry. I've got to run dad to the ER. I was like, what's going on? What's wrong? And he, I can't remember what you said after that, but long story short, his dad uh, was having trouble breathing, which we had noticed a few times. Like I remember helping him put things up after church and notice like his breath was just like, he said, like he was out of breath, mm -hmm. you know? And I'd be like, can you sit down? He'd be like, no, I'm good. Um, so anyways, but, uh. As, so while you're in the room, we hear we hear uh, screams from the back of the house, oh. and so um, it's different too because you were actually there, you know. And um, so I we ran to the back of the house, and uh, 
I was checking for a pulse the best that I knew how. And he's like, what, 6'4"? He's a big man. 6'2". Big man. Big, big man. No 6'3". And he was laid back on his bed. Um, he looked lifeless. I'm checking for a pulse. People are in the hallway praying in tongues and screaming and shouting. And Terry was checking on him and trying to see what, 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 what's going on. What can we do? Um, so uh, ambulance comes. They come pick him up. I was hard to even maneuver him because the hallways were so small, trying to get him out of the hallways onto the ambulance. Um, we stayed back, packed his bags because we knew like dad's coming home. Mm-hmm. Well, I remember going to the hospital. People are in the waiting room praying. Um, and then we get back to the door and we remembered everything we'd been taught. And we said, if your faith isn't for yeah. him to fully come back and recover, then don't step foot in this room don't with us. Room. Yeah. Don't even come yeah. in. And so once we got in, we we were just all like, I mean, heads of the church in there praying in tongues that he was going to come back. Um, I don't they remember when they believing. called it. Did they, they call believing. it on the ambulance or did they call it when he got to the hospital? I don't I don't remember that exact part. I just remember like, because in that moment it was like when we got to the hospital, like I was I was using faith to raise him for it was it was it was, it was, it was an exact three hours and thirteen minutes yeah. before they called it. Yeah. Like, and that's, yeah, again, the out-of-the-box mentality. Like, that's mm-hmm. out of the box. Like, for, for a lot of Christians these days, like, oh, you're going to raise him. He's, he's going to be alive after what he just went through. So he had a blood clot that went to his heart and caused a heart attack. And I can't remember if they called it on the ambulance or if they called it once we got to the hospital. But, I mean, we, were, we weren't shaken. We were like, no, we're standing in this. And, um, and so, anyways, that happened. Um, we ended up leaving. He didn't, he didn't come back, but, I mean, unshakable faith you know yeah. you press and um yeah, I, re- I remember that part when um we was during that actual moment um i was reminding myself about getting into that low slow in the heat of the moment um because when that happened and they the ambulance had already came i it was it was it was like two at that point it was like around 2 45 a.m yeah. and you was in the room getting your jackets or, or whatever ready my dad's best friend and assistant lived right behind us, and they were in the street running, getting their coats and getting ready to. And then, so they all back in the house, and I'm the only one on the street, and it was the quietest I've ever heard Earth. It was the quietest I've ever heard this planet. And I was just standing in the middle of the street, just staring at the ambulance as it drove as far as straight as un- until my eye couldn't physically see it no more. That's how, f- that's how long I was just standing in the street, and I just stood there, and I've never in my life heard that type of silence. And I was just stand, standing there, and I knew what to do. I said, all right, well, uh, it's, time to, it's time to also, an, another opportunity, again, to put to work what we've been trying to do. Mm-hmm. And then so in the midst of people, for obvious, I mean, of course, being, you know, in that heat of the moment with the emotions, of course, um, I took it upon myself to um, to uh, be, to get in that low, slow, and, uh, so in that in the heat that moment, I could lead everyone around me, in the sense of hearing from the Lord, being patient, being calm, and purposely being slow. So therefore, I don't get in a rush, so I can hear clearly what the Lord wants me to do and how He wants me to navigate. Mm-hmm. And so when we um, <clears throat> excuse me, when we um, did all that and went to the went to the um, hospital, it was funny because it, it it's, this kind of goes right back to what Andy's question about going into ministry. Like, was it kind of so? Was it easy to like go right into what God was leading me to do, or even with the church and stuff? Um, a five to six months, no, four to five months, right before he passed. Mm-hmm. Out, I mean, I can't explain it. It was only supernatural. The hunger that came over me concerning God's word. Yeah, I, remember. I was all, I was only rapping and traveling and rapping. Doing shows. I wasn't doing no sermons and preachings or messages or outlines at all, at all. Four to five months before he passed away, I could not get enough of the word. Like, I was barely going to going to bed at night with Hannah. I would be in the living room watching TV and the day start and just feeding like crazy, just soaking it in the word. And if I was too tired to watch, I would read my Bible my lap for hours. If I was too tired to read, I would look back at TV again with my eyes barely open. And this happened... You know what? Like, from 10 p.m. We, to like 5 a.m. Can we add that our our bed was a, a broken futon that folded us in like a taco <laughs> when we sat in it that night? There's some comic <laughs> relief for everybody. But yeah, but but uh, during that part, oh. it was it was such like hunger to where it was like it couldn't be it couldn't be satisfied. Like I just I I was just stuck. But during that process, I knew 
obviously after that the Lord was just working on my heart to yeah. prepare me for this specific next role yeah. to take on with ease without having to prepare for it. Yeah. Because he already prepared me he for it. He was preparing you. During that and process. you didn't even know it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so it was a couple of days later and I stood up and I told him right with hand, I said, this is my church now. Uh, I'm uh, going to be your pastor. And so, so you know, and, and, and then um, the day before his uh, service, we went to uh, Johnson University of College in, um, there because they had booked me. And people asked, are you still going to go do it? And I was like, this is an opportunity to get on stage, put a microphone in my hand, and stand up for an entire university. And what went through, and what went through my mind was, my my daddy taught me when you have an opportunity to minister, you don't turn it down. Yeah. yeah. And so that's what was going through my mind was like, let's go minister. And then so it was the day before the service, but it is funny because even years ago, and that was way back, people would still write me and find me throughout the years, whoever was there, who was a college student. Hey, I remember that moment. You said you had to go to your dad's field the next day. And that has marked me. And there's and so many people still would send those messages. And it was like, you know, just a statement of like, no, no matter what, you never just like Again, also my spiritual father, that coping, you never allow anything to stop you from ministering the word of God, however that ministry is. And at that time, it was music. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of people that went free that day and at the university. And so it was, but um, it was just, just an amazing experience. And then at, at his service, I rapped his favorite song of mine. Um, uh, his song, uh, well, he had two favorites, so I picked one, but the, the song called End the Word. Um, so I had rapped that song at his service and then gave a, like a, 10, 15 minute message. And then that next Sunday, I preached a sermon called uh, What Now? Talking about moving forward <laughs> and what we're, and what God was going and to do. Then, So his dad passed away the day before Terry's birthday. Yeah, but the day before my so 27th birthday. So the next birthday. day we woke up and it was Terry's birthday. And yeah. it's like, I think I went out and I bought you a new prayer journal. She went out. Got, <laughs> that was that one. She I went like, out. But no, but, but, but this was special because she actually went out and she, and she knew she knew Terry's about to pass to the church, gonna take over church. So she went out and she got that journal. It was for my sermon notes Can for, for me to preach from. So she came out, she got my journal, and our nana, her nana, my nana Love got nana. Uh, got me two or three suit coats, yeah, and some pants. And Hannah got me a journal, and she came back with a, a velvet birthday cake, I and sure we did. still sitting there. People hold back their tears. We got in faith so they could see me happy birthday. And then the next, and then the next day, yeah. I think, or two days later, was church sir, our first church service. Yeah. Yeah. And <clears throat> here's a congregation that just lost his pastor. But again, we knew unshakable faith. Yeah, we're gonna come out. We're, we're, and I remember my husband is about to go minister to the congregation for the first time and address them with the word that the Lord's given him. Yeah. Um. And I remember I'm gonna have to go out there and stir up faith mm-hmm. and so i remember going out there and clapping and choosing joy oh, despite yeah. the circumstance because i knew my husband's best get go out here and preach thank you again church family for joining us again this was part one of a two-part episode next week we get to hear a little bit more about how god brought the miners to texas and what he's doing in their life now so we don't want you to miss that um, come back for another winning conversation on friday <laughs>